Well, praise the Lord how good it is to see this good group of people at the church today. We want to welcome all of you to our in-house service. We're glad to see your smiling faces. How do you know we're smiling, Brother Danny? We got masks on. Well, everybody don't. And I can just look at your eyes and see that you're smiling. And hey, everybody needs what Ronnie's got. Then I can see your teeth. (laughs) She's got a shield. Praise God, we all got a shield. His name's Jesus. Amen. 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 How good it is to be in the house of the Lord. Just want to tell you that we had a wonderful, wonderful prayer meeting yesterday at the barn at Cecil Baptist Church. If you haven't ever been able to go to Cecil and see that barn that they've refurbished, it'll bless your heart. And the acoustics are so good in that old barn. Yesterday, we had 11 men at the prayer meeting. And uh, a lot of people think that we're just doing this for preachers. It's for anybody that wants to come pray. Men or women, we invite you to come. And uh, Brother uh, Henley said yesterday, let's just sing Amazing Grace. We had 11 men singing Amazing Grace. And boy, I tell you what, it was beautiful. Beautiful. And... uh, we thought we were the sons of Jubal. That's right. I tell you what. Amen. It was wonderful. We had a great prayer meeting. And listen, it's working. It's working. We've been doing it seven weeks now. And I heard this past week that the numbers, 7,000 a day down to 4,000 a day. Praise God. So it's working. It's working. Now, we'll be having another prayer meeting uh, this Saturday at 11 o'clock at Gordon Avenue Baptist Church. So, we certainly want to invite those that would like to come and participate in this time of prayer. It's just amazing to have so many churches to gather together. Men from uh, churches, about four or five, six different churches gathering together to pray. And it's been wonderful. It's been a great time of fellowship and a great time of prayer. We started praying about COVID and wound up praying for the nation, wound up praying for the churches, wound up repenting and praying for ourselves. <laughs> Praise God. Just having a good time in the Lord. Uh, we welcome you. We welcome those who might be tuning in by way of our live stream. We're certainly glad that you're with us today, and we welcome you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Now, before I do my morning prayer, And Steve comes to lead us in a song or two. Let me just make mention again, we certainly appreciate all of you who continue to support the church by ways of your tithe and offering. Uh, The offerings has been really well, and we praise God for that. A lot of little churches like ours, uh, they've just not made it, but God's been good to us. And uh, we welcome those who might be listening by our live stream, the opportunity to uh, invest in our ministry. Uh, The address is 600 North Gordon Avenue, uh, 8L, Georgia, 31620. Just uh, send your love offering to us. We'll be glad to receive it and use it for the glory of God. And thank you for those of you who are present who continue to give. Uh, Let me remind you that uh, next week is homecoming. Now, last year we didn't have a homecoming service, but this year we're going to have a homecoming service. Brother Steve Matters will be coming to share in word and song next week. We'll not have Sunday school next week. Uh, Bring a covered dish with some food in it. Amen? Amen. Covered dish with food in it. Now Barry will tell you to bring big old pots of chicken and dumplings. I know Barry. And I don't have a problem with that either. Uh, Bring some chicken and dumplings. That'll be good. Whatever else you want to bring, you bring it on. Because I guarantee you. Somebody says, you mean we're going to eat? Yes. Amen. We're going to eat. I mean, we go to Walmart, don't we? Don't we run to a restaurant every now and then and get us something to eat? Why can't we just gather as a church and eat together here? Amen. So we're looking forward to homecoming next week. You uh, remember that? And uh, we'll have a good time in the Lord. 
Now, we had thought about doing a work day, but some of the, most of the work's already been done. But if you see something you think that needs to be done, we welcome you to help and do it. Amen? And uh, so uh, we're looking forward to our homecoming here at Gordon Avenue Baptist Church. Any other announcements? All right, let's pray and get this thing started. Father, we love you. And we're so grateful and thankful for this opportunity you give us to worship. What a glorious day it is in the Lord. And God, we just pray that uh, you would bless in the service. Thank you, dear Lord, for all of those who are present. And thank you, dear Lord, for uh, those who may be tuning in by our live stream service. Uh, God, we just pray that you bless them as well. Have your way during our time of worship. And we'll be careful to give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Steve. Amen. And good morning. If you will, take a hymn and we'll turn to page 132. Praise God, that ought to be the Christian's national anthem. Power in the blood, amen? amen. Praise God. Uh, well, there's so many we need to pray for. Uh, we certainly want to remember the Tomberlin family and the loss of uh, their loved one. Uh, let's lift them up to the Lord in prayer. Continue to pray for the McCall family. Let me just go ahead and say this too. This afternoon, I'm not going to do a live stream service, but I do have a pre-recorded service that uh, I did yesterday that I'm going to put on this afternoon as our evening service. Uh, we've got a daughter that's got a birthday, and so we're going to uh, be with our daughter this afternoon, and I pre-recorded the service for uh, this evening, so uh, you plan to tune in at 6 o'clock. Uh, that's a good thing about being able to do stuff online, you know what I mean? You can pre-record it and then play it back. Of course, it might be a little bit better when it would... How many tuned into the Wednesday night live stream service? Anybody? Well, I see several hands going up. 
I tell you what, the Holy Ghost got a hold of the old preacher Wednesday night. I tell you, that thing really preached. We really enjoyed preaching the resurrection. Uh, any other prayer requests? Miss Carolyn, we certainly want to remember you. Pearlie, we want to remember you and those requests you told me about. Mike? Uh, my nephew, uh, Winfred Smith, lives up in North Carolina. Uh, I don't know his spiritual uh, status, but he wanted to pray for us. And uh, he has COVID, and he has uh, a stomach bleed, something in his, in his okay. stomach. And he's in pretty bad shape. All right, right this, now. and that's a cousin? Like nephew. nephew, okay, my nephew. Brother, All right. my brother Larry is having, he has arthritis in his hips, and he's having a horrible time. All right, let's remember these requests. Uh, also, uh, remember Gwen and the sister in law, Doc, and all the soldiers that are having uh, soul plunders, I guess, by taking this shot. They're being forced out of the military if they don't take it. Okay. Also, let's remember Gwen. They buried her aunt this next week. Okay. Remember Barbara's aunt Shirley. Anybody else? Remember Vera. Vera's Vera's having some problems. Let's remember Vera. They sent her to a different doctor, but I uh, think they might might be have her on the road to recovery with some good medication. Uh, Terry, good to have you back. Uh, Terry, ter Terry said that they diagnosed her with it, but she didn't believe she had it. <laughs> <laughs> But hey, the line's clear now. <laughs> well, we're glad you're back today. Praise God. Anybody else? Or, yes, ma'am. Okay. Good gracious. All right, let's remember this request. Steve's going to come and uh, lead us in our prayer for these requests. We'll sing another number and then we'll get into God's Word, okay? Okay, if you will, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day you've given us, Lord. God, we thank you for each one that's come here this morning, Lord God, to hear thy Word. Lord God, just open our hearts and our minds to your Word, to your message, God. Pastor had to prepare for us, God. God, just anoint him with the word that we need, Lord God, that we can go out and tell others, God, and what we've heard here, God, before it's eternally too late, they come to you. God, we just pray you just be with all those, Lord God, that were mentioned here this morning. There's so many, God, we don't want to miss one, but Lord God, we know, God, that you've got the power to heal, and God, you just heal these people, Lord God, but it's in thy will this morning. God, we just thank you for the men who... That, Stand up for you each and every day, God. God, we just thank you for them. We thank you for their families, Lord. God, we just pray your blessing upon them. God, we just pray for all the emergency response people and stuff. God, we just pray for them this morning. God, we just put your head, your protection around them. God, just keep them safe. God, we just pray you just be with all our military, God. They face the things they face, Lord. God, we just lift them up to you today, God. God, we just pray you'd be with us. We go into the furtherance of the service, God. Just open our hearts and minds to your word. Forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' sweet name I pray. Amen. 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 If you will, turn over to page 151. <laughs>
right, Brother Mark's going to come and bless us with a number of some type, a good song. And while he's coming and preparing, let me invite you to take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Isaiah. Today we'll be in the book of Isaiah chapter 26, and I want us to look at verse 3 as our text verse of Scripture. Come on, Brother Mark, bless our heart, brother. whisper sweet peace at any given moment. All right, let's look at the Word of God. Isaiah chapter number 26, verse number 3. Listen to what the Bible says here. Thou, God, thou, that's God, God will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, on God. 
because he trusteth in thee, trusteth in God. God will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on God because he trusts in God. Father, we love you. And help us to glean the truth of what perfect peace is all about. And that you will whisper that to our hearts if we will but open and receive. Now I yield this vessel of clay to you and ask that you use it as a mouthpiece for your spirit's work. And that you speak through it words of wisdom that will not only feed our soul, but God that will fill us so full that we can't help but to spill over out in a dark world that people will be able to see the light of Jesus and experience this perfect peace. And I make my prayer in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen, amen. and amen. One of the most wonderful promises that you and I have as children of God is given in this passage of Scripture. If you go back and you begin to study what's going on in the life of Israel, you'll find that this is one of the darkest periods of Israel's history. Now, <laughs> many times Israel had a dark history. And uh, whether you believe it or not, we are mirroring a mirror of what they're doing. We're doing those same things. And I tell people all the time that God allowed a few mistakes to be printed in the Bible. Somebody will say, bless God, there's no mistakes in the Bible. Well, I beg to differ with you. God let the, the writers pen the mistakes that men made along life's way so that we wouldn't make those same mistakes, but yet we find ourselves making those same mistakes. So the only mistakes you'll ever find in God's Word is the mistakes that men made and how God had to deal with those mistakes. Today it may well prove, this verse of Scripture may well prove to be a very special help to us when we are surrounded by so much gloom and doom and depression I mean, we are constantly threatened with three great enemies in our lives. Do you know that as children of God, there's still three great enemies that, uh, that want to get into your heart and into your life? And if you're not careful, these three enemies will invade your soul. And while these three enemies could never take away your salvation these three enemies can steal away your joy. Amen. And it is the joy of the Lord that is your strength. Well now preacher, what are these three enemies that's trying to invade my soul? Well let me give them to you real quickly. Number one, the enemy of doubt. Anybody in here ever had to deal with doubt? Anybody? Well, there's a few of you that don't have to deal with it. I'm so grateful. I, I had to raise my hand. Not only is there the enemy of doubt, but there is the enemy of fear. I have never in my life saw so many Christian men, women, boys, and girls fearful in a time like this. And some would say, well, now, preacher, we have a right to be fearful. But the Bible makes it very clear that God has not given to us the spirit of fear. But yet we're living in fear. Uh, one of the statements that was made in our prayer meeting yesterday that really impressed me is they wanted us to close everything down and we closed the church house and that should have been what was left open so we could have prayer. Amen. And we began to deal with what's causing the fear. And uh, I thought that was a pretty good statement. So doubt, number two, is fear. 
And then number three is worry. Those three things will invade you and steal away this perfect peace that God wants for you to have. And it's a shame that we allow these things to come into our life. We don't have anything to worry about. If we live as children of God here, we're blessed because He's with us here. But if we die and we leave this old land of the dying and move to the land of the living, we're more blessed than we would be here. Because we're basking in the presence of God. Not for one day, but every day. And just remember, the Bible says a day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. So the Lord's time is a little bit different than ours. When all is going well, And the skies are bright and blue. It's easy to read this text verse of Scripture, but when the clouds of trial and disappointment and fear and alarm begin to drift across our sky of living and the sun is hidden, how precious these words really get to be to us. We read them and we say, boy, aren't these good. But when everything is dark and dim and gloomy, we read these words and it just about make a Baptist shout. Amen? Amen. To know that God has a perfect peace to us. Now I wish that I could tell you that there is a scripture in the Bible that tells you that you won't ever have any more trouble when you get to be a child of God. But the sad fact and the truth is there's not a scripture in the Bible that will tell you that you won't ever have any more trouble when you get to be a child of God. Because Jesus made it very clear, and I use this a good bit, but I'm going to use it again. In this world... Ye shall have tribulation. What does that mean? That means that you better look out. Trouble is coming if you haven't already had some. I used to ask people, how many of you in here ever been troubled? Anybody? How many of you in here haven't ever had any trouble? Well, just hold on. It's a coming. Trouble's coming. So, uh, There is something far better than troubles that we can dwell our hearts and mind on. Too many of us look at how big our troubles are instead of how big our God is. And so there is the promise of peace even in the midst of trouble. Thou wilt keep Him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Even in the midst of troubles and trials and tribulations and and bad things happening to good people, when you've got your heart and your mind set on God, there is a peace in you that passes your own understanding. Now Lord, I know that there's more month than money, but I still love you. You ever been there? Lord, I know this old vile body that I'm living in is growing older. Listen, last night, we had a little water leak in our refrigerator. So I decided that it was time to pull that thing out of the little hole that was designed for it to be in. And so I pulled it out. So I could get in that little hole behind the refrigerator. I'm not a little feller no more. I remember the time when two of us could pass down our little hall going to the fellowship hall at one time. We still can, but we have to turn sideways to do it now. Amen? Anybody know what I'm talking about? I mean, I, I got back in that little hole behind the refrigerator. And I looked and I couldn't see anything. So I I got out. And I pushed it back into the little place where it goes. And I said, well, it might be something in the front. I didn't see nothing in the back. Maybe it's in the front. 
You know how low you got to get to get to the bottom of a refrigerator? I mean, I got in the floor and was rolling in the floor. Took the front dust plate off of that thing and I said, right here's part of our problem. I mean, I hadn't cleaned that thing in a while and so I cleaned all of that. And I went to get up and I pulled something right here. We're not young as we used to be. I mean, you stop and you think about it. But even in the midst of trying times like that, when you pull a muscle or, or when something is hurting or, or when you get sick or, or when you're trying to deal with disease or, or some of the other things that can be tragically thrown out at you, friend, God gives to us peace if we'll look for peace. Amen. Now I'm going to confess to you. I said, Lord, my goodness, I've hurt myself. I still got your peace, but it still hurts, Lord. Marta, go get the, what is that stuff we use, Voltaren? Go get the Voltaren and rub my back. But hey, God gives to us peace to face whatever we'll have to face in this life. And if you live long enough, you're going to face some things. Now, of what value would freedom from trouble be if we had no inward peace? And that's what God is talking about here. He's talking about an inward peace. Now, how wonderful it is to know that even in the midst of a battle, while the storm is raging at its worst, that we have a trusting soul that can experience inward peace and a deep down, calm, quiet confidence in the God that we serve. Now there are several things that I want to bring to your attention as I bring you the message how to experience perfect peace. How to experience perfect peace. Well, first of all, I want to ask you a question. What is this great blessing that is offered to you and I? What is this great blessing that is offered to us? Well, in the text it's described as a perfect peace. But what is a perfect peace? Can we truly define what perfect peace is? Well, yes, I believe that we can. Perfect peace is a condition of freedom from disturbance within the soul. Now, I didn't say within the mortal body. I said within the soul. It's perfect peace in harmony and reigning within every child of God. If you're saved by the grace of God, this perfect peace that I'm talking about lives in you. Now the Hebrew word shalom has the idea of soundness, of, of health. So it is to be filled with perfect peace, to be spiritually healthy from all other discord within the soul. There can be no room, listen, there can be no room for jealousy. There can be no room for envy. There can be no room for discontentment. There can be no room for uncontrollable temper. There can be no room for selfishness. There can be no room for pride. And there can be no room for intolerance in the soul that is filled with the peace of God that passes even our own understanding. All of these things that I just mentioned, jealousy, envy, discontentment, uncontrollable temper, and the list could go on. You've got it if you're taking notes. Friend. Listen, all of these are disturbing factors in the heart. And that's just exactly what the devil tries to do. If he can get you crossed up with somebody, then friend, he causes you to lose sight of that inner peace that lives within you. And you deal with uncontrollable anger. Anybody here have been mad with anybody? Well, a few of you telling the truth, the rest of you lying. You're human, aren't you? We're all human. 
I used to get mad with my mom and daddy. Y'all want me to tell you how my daddy dealt with that? He looked at me and he smiled real big. He said, boy, you got the same shoes you got mad in to get glad in. Anybody ever heard that before? And he said, I'm going to give you five minutes to get glad. It didn't take five minutes when he said that. Didn't. We don't need these conflicting things to come into our lives. We need to get past all of that and try to live our lives in such a way that we can experience perfect peace from God. Now, they're conflicting notes. The peace which God offers and which we have are by His grace. By His grace. And we can experience this, this peace because it's very practical. Very practical. It is none other than a great calm which He commands. In Mark's Gospel chapter 4 verse 39, the Bible says Jesus arose and rebuked the wind. He said what? Peace be still. Rebuked the wind and said in the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Whenever the storms of your life is raging, cry out to God and ask God to say, Peace be still! Peace be still! And if you'll trust Him, you'll feel that great calm. God calls the peace which He gives a perfect peace. In what sense is it perfect? Well, first of all, it's perfect in its quality. It's perfect in its quality. I like quality products. Don't you? I mean, you can have Coca-Cola or you can have Sam's Cola. Now, Sam's Cola is a little bit cheaper. But it's not as good. Because the quality is just not as great as that of Coca-Cola. I ought to send them this sermon. Maybe they'd pay me for the commercial. Hey. <laughs> Marta said they don't have the right recipe. But you see, God's peace is perfect in its quality. That is to say, it is perfect in the kind of peace that it is. Now, there is an imperfect peace. The peace of ignorance. Uh, when we imagine that all is going well, whereas in fact, if our eyes were open to see the truth, we would see that all is not well. In Jeremiah 6, 14, the Bible says, They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. I enjoy listening to the leaders of all of these countries who wants to sign these peace treaties. They've been signing peace treaties for years. But there's still no peace. There's also the imperfect peace of stagnation. The pool of water may be calm. And it may be peaceful. But underneath is a foul green, stinking green slime. Many men and women know only peace like that. And one day the shock of God's judgment will stir up their pool and they'll find that they have had no real peace whatsoever. There's also the imperfect peace of dependence. Dependence. 
which is a peace that is dependent of something or some person. We're living in the days of dependence. And what is so sad to my soul, and I'm not trying to throw any rocks or stones at anybody in the medical profession, but sometimes whenever those doctors sign the prescription pad to make somebody dependent, on a drug that's going to steal away their quality of life, I struggle with that. Because in the... <laughs> before it's all over with, we get so dependent on that that we've got to have it. And when we don't get it, then we get in trouble. Boy, it gets quiet when the preacher preaches this kind of sermon. But I'm telling you the truth. Today, I could have been a prescription drug addict. Because I was given, not so much now, but in days gone by, I was given prescriptions by the VA Medical Center, and they were throwing that stuff out at me like it was Reese Buttercups. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. <laughs> and it's a shame that, that, that we've got people who, who, who love God that get so wrapped up in this type of dependence and this type of thing controls someone's life. How sad it is. How unsatisfactory this thing it is. And then not only a thing, but a person. Sometimes people get so wrapped up and dependent on somebody else. And whenever you lose a loved one and that person's taken away from you, you've depended on them for so long. And you don't have them anymore and you have to learn to live all over again. Those of you ladies that's lost a husband, you know what I'm talking about. Those of you men that's lost a wife, you know what I'm talking about. I love it because I got a plain spoken preacher's wife. Everybody know what I'm talking about? I said something to her not long ago. I'm always, I got clean feet. That's all I know to say because I've washed them so much in my mouth. <laughs> Anybody ever stuck your foot in your mouth? <laughs> I did something she asked me to do and I said, bless God, I bet you're glad you got me now. I was tooting my horn. And she said, well, I did it 15 years before you got here. <laughs> I said, but you didn't have to climb up on a stool, did you? <laughs> I like to go shopping with her. Anybody have been shopping at Walmart lately and you saw how high that top shelf is? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Listen, we, we, I went in Walmart the other day to get something. I can't even remember what I went in there for, but something that I needed. It was some grocery item. And I'm walking down and this lady says, Excuse me, sir, excuse me. Said, I noticed you were tall, fella. Said, I want you, would you help me get that uh, box of whatever it was she wanted off the top shelf? <laughs> I said, ma'am, I'd be honored to help you. I reached up there and I got it and I handed it to her. I went in an elevator one time and a little short fella looked at me and said, you know, it must be nice to be tall. 
I said, well, it has its disadvantages. I ought not to say this. I said, it has its disadvantages. And he looked at me real seriously, and he said, what could be disadvantaged about being tall? All you online listeners, please forgive me for saying this. I love y'all. Hey, y'all just go ahead and forgive me. I said, well, I said, the only thing is, short folks like you can see every booger that's in my nose. I ought not have said that. <laughs> I ought not have said, God, hey, y'all forgive me. But you see, de depending on people. Friend, we need to depend on God. Amen. We need to depend on Almighty God. So it's perfect in its quality. But secondly, it's perfect in its quantity. It's perfect in its quantity. That is to say the supply of its sufficient and exactly, uh, it exactly meets what we need. The marginal rendering of perfect peace is peace, peace, double peace. I mean, if you look at it, uh, in Philippians 4, 7, the Bible says that God will provide for us a peace and the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds, how? Through Christ Jesus. For there we're told this double peace is the peace of God, the peace of heart, the peace of mind, peace that we need, the peace uh, with garrisons of our mind and the calmness of our heart. This double peace is also uh, in the sense that it is peace with God. Friend, I have peace with God. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1, listen. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then I have the peace of God. Not only do I have peace with God, but I have the peace of God. We go back to Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God. Did you notice that? Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, being justified, we have peace with God. We have peace with God. In Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God. The peace of God. So we have that, that, that double standard there. We have... Uh, Peace with God and the peace of God. It is perfect in its consistency. That is to say it is permanent, a permanent factor in Christian living. The promises says you will keep, thou wilt keep. Psalm 121 verse 4, listen to what the Bible says. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Boy, I'm glad that we don't serve a part-time God. Amen. I'm glad that our God don't ever grow weary in well-doing. I'm glad that our God is always on His throne, always alert. He's never lethargic. He's always alert. I've never called Him and got a busy signal, which you don't get busy signals no more. You just get put on hold. Oh, wait, I've got another call coming. Let me switch you to call waiting. Anybody ever been there before? Listen, I, that's right, you get a recording. Listen, I, I didn't want everybody to get my, my voice so much on my recording. My phone says, hello. This is, uh, I don't even remember what I've got on it now, but it's something like this. This is Pastor Danny Ray. I appreciate you calling. Uh, if you will, leave your name, your phone number, and a brief message, and I'll get back with you as soon as possible. But then i got music playing, too. I mean, when, 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 when my phone rings, there's music playing. Amazing Grace. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Listen, I had this fellow that got on there the other day and says, Would you mind switching me back to the music? I said, Why? He said, I like that song. He said, I'll call you back. I said, I, said, I want to hear the music. But it's not that way. I mean, used to, it'd be a busy signal. But you, I've never called God and got a busy signal. Never been put on hold. Never got a uh, dial one for this, two for that, three. Have you ever, you get that all the time. If you need to speak to the fellow who's going to give you the loan that you need to pay your bills, dial one. If you need to speak to the fellow who's going to uh, tell you that you can't get that that you need, dial two. 
If you need to speak to that, do you ever get tired of that? Mm. And I love the new, I love these new uh, uh, car warranty folks that call you. We notice that your car warranty has expired. If you would like to get a new car warranty, dial one. If you would like to opt out of getting any more calls, dial two. I've dialed two 925 times. And so the last time they called, I dialed one. In just a few moments, this fella come on the line. Yes, sir. I said, what model is your car? I said, I ain't got no car. <laughs> well, what do you, what do you want, want us to give you a warranty for? I said, all I got is a bicycle. <laughs> I said, take me off your list. Thirty minutes later, I got another call. <laughs> Listen, God. God, you won't get a busy signal. You won't get dial this and that and the other. When you call Him, He is constantly available. Now, how perfect this peace is. How does this perfect peace come to us? The second thing, and then we'll close. Because we've got to hurry. <laughs> Philippians 4, 7 again. Peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Notice, the Lord Jesus Christ is the channel. He is the channel through which the peace of God flows into our soul. The peace within is the possession of, of, of the Christian alone. People outside of Christ will never have true perfect peace. Somebody thinks that money will bring them peace. The rich young ruler thought that money could keep him happy. The prodigal son who got all of his riches thought that money could keep him happy. But when his money was gone, what happened? He had no peace. There is no peace for anyone who does not possess Christ and who is now resting on the, their own selfish attitudes. But there is peace for those who are resting in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why I don't think that we should be so worried as we've been. It is the blood of Jesus Christ, Mark, that whispers sweet peace. Thank you for singing that song this morning. It is the blood of Jesus Christ that whispers sweet peace within. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 20, having made peace uh, through the blood of His cross uh, and to Him to reconcile all things in Himself by Him, I say whether they be things in the earth or things in heaven. He whispers uh, sweet peace to me. It's by the power of the Holy Ghost of God that you have peace with God. In Galatians 5.22, the Bible says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. All of these good things. It is the Holy Ghost of God that fills and floods our life with these good things. Look at the great promise which is made in Psalm 119, verse 165. Great peace have they that love the law, thy word, and nothing shall offend them. Friend, if you've been offended, then you're not in the word of God. Things and people can so often disturb us. You know how I know that. I've been disturbed. And even cause us to stumble. But there's a promise of perfect peace to those people who love God and who meditate on God's word. How can I have perfect peace? By our obedience to the Word of God. I want to read to you Leviticus chapter number uh, 26. Leviticus 26, verses 3. 
through verse 6. This is what the Bible says. If ye walk in my statutes, that's my word, and keep my commandments, doing those things that I tell you to do, and do them, then I will give you rain in due season. The land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield her fruit, and your threshing uh, shall reach into the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and ye shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land of safety, and I will give peace in the land that ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid, and I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. God has promised to take care of His children. Be sure to notice the most important word in all of those scriptures that I've read. It's a little two-letter word. The word if. If we don't do the things that we're supposed to do, then there's no way that God is going to bless us. If we don't do what this word says for us to do, then we're going to lose our perfect peace. The joy that is ours to strengthen us. God guarantees us that if we will will walk, if we will walk in His statutes, and if we will do His commandments, and if we will keep our hearts in perfect peace, if we'll do our part, then God promises us He'll do His part. By plenty of praise and prayer, the promises of Philippians 4 7 is preceded by the condition, the conditions rather, mentioned in verse 6. Two conditions are mentioned in order that we may have perfect peace. And I want to give those to you. Who is it that God will keep in perfect peace? Number one, the one whose mind is steadfast. Is your mind steadfast? Is your mind on God? Then you have perfect peace. And then number two, the one who trusts in the Lord. I'm not critical of vaccines. Some of our people in our church may not have had vaccines. I'm not here to criticize you for not having a vaccine. I've been taking vaccines all my life. Had to take vaccines to get into the school system, to go to school. Uh, Took vaccines to keep from getting and spreading disease. Uh, Took vaccines to be able to minister to people who are dying with terminal illnesses. Went in the United States Army and went down a line and they were shooting me in both arms with vaccines. Now they said they told me what they was, but I didn't speak medical language. So it didn't help me a bit in the world to know what they were. The only thing they said that scared me is you make sure you be still when you go through these lines. Because this little gun we're going to shoot you with will tear your skin if you move the wrong way. So I was very still. Taking vaccines all my life. And I'm not opposed to vaccines, but I do want you to know this. I trust God more than I do a vaccine. Now don't misunderstand me. God has given the medical field uh, the knowledge to, to, to create these vaccines. And I believe God heals through hands of doctors and nurses. And all of that, I, but, but listen, while he may use their hands, all healing comes from God. Amen. I choose to place my trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. Both of these expressions denote faith. God wants us to have faith. And if we have faith, then God is going to take care of providing that perfect peace for us. Because, why? Because He's the giver of peace. Amen. One word 
as we close. In Isaiah 26, 3, and I've already given it to you, and that's the word God. Thou, you could take that word thou out and write God right there. And thee, at the very end, you could take that word out and write God right there. This scripture in Isaiah 26, 3 begins with God and ends with God. True peace will begin with God and it'll end with God. Did you hear what I just said? And trusting souls live their lives between the beginning and the end. Did you catch that? Begin with God, end with God, and if we're to have true, perfect peace, it comes between God, the beginning, God, the ending. Perfect peace is the Lord Himself within us. Not an experience that we've had, not a doctrine that we've heard preached, not an it that somebody's told us about, but true peace, perfect peace, is the Lord Himself. And when we're stayed upon Jehovah, our hearts will be fully blessed, and then and only then shall we find what He's promised. Perfect peace and rest. It can be yours today Amen. if you don't have it. It starts with God, and it's completed with God. So the invitation is simply this. Come to God and find perfect peace. Stand with me. Father, I've delivered to your people that that you've trusted to me. Lord, it's your message. And I pray that you'll use it now for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God speak to your heart. You step out and come.